Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Thanks for watching another weekly video. What I've got today is a little stainless steel TIG welding repair, a little uh-oh from the machinist. You see where all the arrows are pointing. We're going to fill that all in with weld metal. That step is not supposed to be there. So out of material, part needs to be delivered soon. No time to get more material. The only choice is to weld the part and remachine. So that's what we're about today. A lot of times the machinist would, you know, give me a call, say, hey, could you do this? I'll leave the part on the table. I'll mark it where it needs to be welded. It's obvious. And then I can just go do my thing. And uh, he can come in and do his thing whenever his hours permit. In this case, he's on his way. And I'll have it mostly done by the time he gets here. I'm using ER-308L. I've only got 1 16th today. And one thing that people have mentioned, well, I've, I've noticed in the camera here, my ring showing so you shouldn't wear a ring while you're uh, working and that's why I wear this little split ring it's a little homemade out of silicon bronze filler and uh, it it's a wedding ring it serves the purpose of a wedding ring but I at least have a shot of it yanking off there if I hang it on something which has happened before by the way that's not going to help me if it grounds out to something I realize that but uh, it's important to stay married as well as to uh, keep all your fingers all right so what I'm doing here, I'm leaving the rod in the puddle. I'm using 80 to 90 amps with that 1 16th rod. Just leaving it in the puddle and putting a little pressure on the weld, feeding it in as it will take it. No, no huge pressure. I'm not trying to force feed the puddle, but I don't, I don't want to starve it either because this is a weld buildup, so I would like to get finished with it. So I'm just moving along nice and slow, trying to fill what seems like it wants to take at 80 to 90 amps. Again, that's just a 1 16th filler. I'm using a 332nd 2% lanthanated electrode. That's 2.4 millimeters electrode. And then I'll swap directions and just put another pass right on top of that one. Now here, very shortly, I'm going to have to start thinking ahead a little bit more. Pretty obvious what to do with the first pass. And I know I need more metal on there, so I can't go wrong by doing this. But... I need to start, uh, you know, thinking it through and, and contouring this thing and, you know, thinking where I can, where it makes sense to add metal. Now you might notice I'm using a TIG finger here. It gets really hot without one. I'm sure I could find a place to prop, but swapping direction like that, that works out just fine for me. Now see, I've got a little line underneath that last bead right, that I didn't tie in. And it would be a little low place when it's machined. So what I'm doing, I'm coming back and tying that in now and pushing a little rod in there. And I'm dipping it in and out so that I can just see where I'm going a little bit better. I want to actually crown it up, which is I did, to give me some a shelf to kind of stack the, uh, the next beads on. So I'm trying to come over far enough on that bead where I won't have a low place, which means about halfway or more. And I'm trying to push a little rod in the puddle again to make things you know speed up just a little bit without forcing it and the same thing again stack another one on top of the other one it all is starting to look alike after a while I guess but I am having to stop and let this thing cool about every pass blow a little air on it um, wire brush it off so that it flows better and then take a look at it and see where the next bead seems like it needs to go. Now, it is a good idea to swap directions uh, periodically when you're doing a lot of buildup like this. It just kind of changes the uh, the direction that the stress is because you know as you weld that it's like lacing a boot up. It just kind of shrinks and, and tightens up, and you can't see it happening. But if you're welding on something thin, you can see it puckering. But the stress is there, so it's good to kind of switch up things and change direction don't weld the same direction all the time especially if you're going to stop in the same place if it's something straight if you were going to stop in the same place every time you'll see a you know you could see stresses build up on on like if you were doing beads on a, across a piece of flat bar you can see the thing warp when you're done if you don't change directions we'll talk about that in a future video and then I want to go backwards here because I I find that sometimes doing that, it's easier to uh, make a high crown bead, and this is on the top corner that's going to machine off. I want to make sure to have enough of a corner contour that I don't have a little low place. 
even though it'll probably get a chamfer on it. Just making sure. And you see, I've, I've got it out there. I got the corner built up, but now I've got a little, looks like I'm going to be a little low in there if I don't do something about that. So now, there's the dog barking. So I'm going to come across and fill in that, uh, fill in those grooves. I don't know exactly how much needs to be machined off of this thing. Um, again, the machinist is not here yet, so if, I, if he said, oh yeah, it's got to take another 50 down, then I would probably left it alone. But when you don't know, the rule of thumb is when you think you got enough, put a little bit more. <laughs> and the same thing goes for out here on the outside. I can see I've got plenty of metal there, but it's got some valleys in it, so I'm just going to do a little dry wash downhill. I don't need any more metal, but I need to kind of smooth it off, so I'm just kind of blending it with the torch here just to make sure I'm rolling it on a piece of copper so I don't have any ground pits and so that that did the trick and now we're going to put it back in the CNC lathe and go back to the step where it's going to fin face off the uh, the face of it at least some step as up to the machinist to do We're going to take a cut or two right here, just a little bit. And the main thing we're going to do here is just see if this thing's going to clean up before I go home. So we're going to try the, uh, you know, take a cut on the face of it, not taking it all the way down to final cut, but just enough to make sure that, you no, know, we're not going to have any low places. So we take a peek there, and we're looking pretty good. Still got some more that needs to cut off for final for the final finish and uh, no low places. So the next thing is to uh, take a skim cut on that on the OD and we'll put that in a manual lathe. Take a quick cut on that. And again I think there's about another 20 to 25 thousandths that, that'll, uh, that needed to go even after this cut. But th again this is just to make sure that things are going to look okay and I'm not going to need to do any touch up because once I go home I don't want to come back and and, uh, and weld again so alright it looks like that's going to clean up just fine and uh, so that's it for today thanks for watching if you're watching this on my web page you can uh, click on the TIG finger button and learn more about that if you're watching it on YouTube click on the blue link and you can go to the web page